Hi, I'm Tim. Welcome and thanks for logging on. This is Watches Tonight on Watchbox Studios. Sean is on the switcher. This evening, we discuss giving watches as gifts for the holidays 2023. Talk a little bit about what it means to be part of the watch community. All of that, I show your wrist shots and we chat live tonight on Watches Tonight. Guys, if you enjoy this program, guess what? Smaller doses, but greater frequency. Check my Instagram, Tim underscore Masso, where I now have almost 3,000 one minute reviews of my favorite watches from our collection. Some of these aren't even listed on our site. So if you're interested, this is the back channel hookup. And I tend to update it on average more than once a day. So the content comes fast and furious. I'm also issuing a casting call for our winter 2024 collector conversation series. Now this is our best viewed feature. As you could see, everyone and every collection is worth telling a tale and they all have their own stories. It's a spotlight on you. This is something we do to be part of the community. Whether you bought your watches here or not, I wanna hear about it. So reach out to me at mondaymailbag at thewatchbox.com. If you are in the Northeast United States, we're able to meet you in our New York office or our Philadelphia office. Now, if you wanna travel from beyond that area, you're more than welcome to, we would love to have you. But again, it's probably best if you are tri-state area or Northeast, unless we have some way of visiting you when we go to LA and Miami later this year. But regardless, I want you to reach out and I want to see you right here on Watchbox Studios. Okay, in the box, let's see what's going on. Marcus from Brooklyn, Arto Charles from New York City, Butik One from Poland, Soma R, Jim Millet, Ryan McHale from Massachusetts. We got Eddie Landsberg, a longtime fan and supporter of the show. Mateo C, Ordinary from Norway, Herb, Thomas Burnett, Rob K from Toronto, CLF, Renside Miroslav from Europe, Renside, welcome from Richmond in Virginia. Junior Johnson, Watch Bronco, Casper Berg, B Spoon, and Thor. Welcome to all of you, I'm glad to have you here. Stick with me, because we've got some fun stuff going on. First, let's start with some of yours on mine's viewer wrist shot number one with Danny K, who starts with Rolex and Swatch, and I guess you could all say Blanc Pain too, as he explores Lucerne, Switzerland in the late fall. Amy H. and friend, admire the Elanga Unzona Langomatic Perpetual bought from Matt at our 1916 company. Thank you for trusting our team. Aaron B. and his Breguet Classique 7137 traverse historic Luxembourg. David F. rolls with his 1916 bought AP Royal Oak Offshore Diver from our own Matt Parker. Thank you for trusting us. And Matt. Scott wows with a Breguet and Rolex double take. And Rob H., Tim Mancuso, and a couple of other friends luxuriate in the Persian Gulf during Dubai Watch Week, and I think one of those is probably Andrew from Watch Finder. Actually, maybe Andrew and his wife, Charlotte. Tim, let me know if you're in the chat box tonight, who is in that picture? All right, let's rock. That is Dubai as they luxuriate in the otherwise hazardous Persian Gulf. <laughs> okay, how many watches must you buy to be part of the watch hobby? This is not a hypothetical question. I think there is a real answer. And this is a hobby built around seemingly endless pressure to buy, accumulate, let the whole world know that you do, especially in the era of social media. Is it possible to be a watch enthusiast without endless money and crass consumerism? We're gonna determine that now, but I'm gonna just get, throw this opinion out here. I was part of the watch community and active in the watch community and excited about watches when I had zero watches. So just keep that in mind when you start to wonder how often you need to buy and post new watch day or new watch arrival wrist shots on your favorite Facebook group. There is a ton of pressure to conclude that no, you can't be a member of the watch community unless you are a prolific buyer. But because we are talking about gifting watches and ultimately a sort of consumerism tonight, let's look at how many enthusiasts receive their exposure to the watch community in ways that make it seem like endless budgets are necessary. Distorted perceptions are created and perpetuated on social media, by social media figures, by forum regulars, by Facebook groups, yes, including mine, and online shopping, yes, including mine. Notice that many of those actually encompass my work. Retailers, frankly, also portray constant accumulating as normal, so keep that in mind. They are not neutral parties in this game. Especially on forums and Facebook, it can feel like everyone else is buying a new watch every single day. And some of them do, that's not normal. 
That is intimidating enough for veteran collectors to see, but can you imagine the formative impact it has on young people who might have an interest in watches? That was me a long time ago, and actually from a personal perspective, that was me almost exactly 20 years ago when I was 19 years old. I walked away from the watch space twice before I was 30 because I felt no sense of belonging among the absurdly rich and seemingly profligate people who seemed to dominate that that space, but what I've learned over time is that they are the vocal minority and the majority of people have one or a couple of fine watches that they savor like fine wine, drawing it out and making it last. Look at me today, personally, not in my sales role, as the counterpoint to this. I hardly buy watches. I haven't bought a watch for myself in five years. Am I not part of the watch community? Your presence in this space is what you make of it. You are totally in control and at the wheel. I do recommend everyone have at least one watch that they love first, because it's no fun to be on the outside looking in. I was that person for a long time, and yes, it's a whole lot more interesting when you've got a little bit of skin in the game, if only because you understand what it's like to take pride in that piece, commune with the others who are fans of that brand or that model or that era or that style, and ultimately feel like in your way, you are a player in the watch community. And look, you can do that without a watch, but I think one nice watch is a good number. And I think that's all you really need. But here's the thing. The one good watch often comes to mean more to a collector than many watches worn infrequently. So keep that in mind. What you do in the watch community defines your sense of belonging in the watch community. It's not a race to own or buy the most. Everyone watching this, commenting live in the chat or below this if you're streaming the video recorded, is active in the watch community. Keep it up. That's exactly what it means. This is what it's like. And I have to say at the end of the day, engage. That's the number one. How do you turn a purchase into an experience? You bring other people and opinions and trips and stories and memories into the frame. Sometimes you feel more connected to the watch space by giving a watch as a gift than by buying one for yourself. That's me. And you can see I probably have the least impressive watch in that wrist shot. I was no less a part of the party at Watch Time New York. So, young people or even older folks interested in a career change can find opportunities in the space. Why make it a hobby when it can also be a job? And we've got a careers page on our Watchbox slash 1916 company website. It's down at the bottom. You can find all the great reasons to join us globally, and a lot of people, about 400, have. That's our jobs page. I'm not trying to necessarily sway you one way or another. I would also say that there has never been greater demand for certified watchmakers and refinishers of watches. There are programs like at North Seattle Community College where you can get a college degree in watch making as well as an internationally recognized certificate with a bench test. So you can go from being the enthusiast to being the watchmaker and all along the way own as many watches as you're able and comfortable purchasing. There is no mandate to be the guy drowning in rooms full of boxes and papers that he can't store. Frankly, active members of the community are often defined by deeds rather than collections. And look at the number of people who are longtime collectors in the space, like Ming or William Messena, who have now become designers of watches, and they take more pride in that than in piling up their collections. Aldous Hodge no longer defines himself as a watch collector, but as a designer. A lot of guys who are really into it and invested are now more interested in being craftsmen or designers or producers or the inspiration behind watches. And that can also be your gig in the space if you've got the patience and the commitment. You don't even have to have one watch. Although again, one good watch is my recommendation. And before we jump into the admittedly consumerist holiday gifting guide, keep all that in mind. Okay, what's going on here? Jim Millett saying, amazing community on Tim's Facebook group, and I appreciate that, because Facebook does not tell everyone when I go live with my streams each week. Jim is the guy who always finds it 
sends up the bat signal and brings in the group. Right here we have Jim Olsen saying watch collecting is a marathon, not a sprint. We got Crazy Watch, good evening from Luxembourg. Thank you Tim for sharing your experience. Indeed being passionate is a matter of desire to learn on what you don't own. That is true. Some of the watches that have given me the greatest pleasure are things I've come to understand intellectually, like for example, how the resonance chronometer from Jorn works, or how a grand complication is defined traditionally. I've never owned a resonance chronometer or a grand complication. BNS asking Tim, what would qualify as a good watch? I would say a good watch is a watch that is repairable forever. Something that is intrinsically worth repairing and servicing, and which can be so by a watchmaker. Okay, holidays 2023 and how to shop for a watch enthusiast. Shopping for friends or relatives with super niche hobbies can be a true nightmare. That goes double when the products are ruinously expensive, esoteric, and questionably wearable on wrists of uncertain size. Add the famously idiosyncratic and subtle preferences of watch collectors, and shopping becomes a little bit of a nightmare, to be perfectly honest. It's like buying a lottery ticket if lottery tickets cost thousands thousands of dollars each with the same chance at a payout. The solution is to plan ahead, minimize uncertainty, and then have a strategy. This episode is going to review options at different price points, different levels of watch retail, evaluate the risk, and offer solutions for avoiding disappointment. Gift giving should be as much fun as receiving, and that's our goal today, to make it fun to give a watch. Let's start with a simple question. How much can you afford to spend? Not everyone has luxury watch money to spend on a gift, and that's okay, because we've got solutions here. This isn't just a matter of means. You might be able to swing $20,000 for a present, but how would you feel if it falls flat, if you just totally whiff, opens the box, looks, and thanks? No way. That would be the ultimate burn. And sometimes spending comparatively little money can protect both the low budget collector and the high budget collector or buyer come the holidays. So let's see it in action. First, cheap watches can be fun. And there's a huge range that's available for below $500. So that's where we're going to start. This is enough to count as a worthwhile gift without taking huge risks. The dollar amounts are low enough that you can even give the receipt with the watch to facilitate an exchange and not feel gauche doing it. So let's start up with $100 or more. Or you know what? hundreds of dollars or less. How's that? Let's start at the absolute ground floor, and it always starts with G-Shock. Let's consider the OGG, the DW5600 series. Now, this is the direct descendant of Kikuo Ibe's landmark 1983 G-Shock design, and it's still packed with goodies, including 200-meter water resistance, flash alerts that are programmable, a perpetual calendar, a chronograph, an alarm, a countdown timer with alarm, a backlight, 12 and 24 hour time, your choice, UFC levels of shock resistance, two years of battery life, and a feathery 53 gram mass. The basic watch costs $75, that's $75, and several variants, these and more, are available from which to choose. I bought one of these for my mom, who's not a watch enthusiast, and yet the appeal of this rugged and versatile tool is so great that it endears itself even to a casual watch user. It's one of the few watches you can give to an enthusiast or a non-enthusiast with equal and immense probability of success. Alternatively, spend a bit more and go full designer with the Ed Sheeran G-Shock. This is the DW6900. I have no knowledge of his music, and as a metal guy, I don't think it would end well. But this is a sharp-looking multifunction watch that doesn't take itself too seriously. At $185, we're still within the price range many consider to be stocking stuffer territory, but the cool box seems tailor-made for a small wrapped present under the tree, mantle, or wherever your holiday gifts are collected. Functionally, it's not that different from the DW5600, but the 6900 has a five-year battery replacement interval, which is a meaningful three more than the standard G-Shock. Now I've seen this type of G-Shock watch operate for decades with only battery replacement, so don't write it off as a disposable watch, not by any means. It'll outlive at least four generations of Apple Watch along the way. Or 
We could take a different approach with a watch collection that rose almost in parallel with the G-Shocks of the early to mid 80s. Those are the Swatch watches. Now, here's the thing about a Swatch watch. Despite their modest prices, these are genuine Swiss-made timepieces. They come from the same company that also makes Omega, Blancpain, Breguet, Longines, and others. So the pedigree is actually quite impressive, and it was the Swatch watch that rescued all of these brands with the seed money to create today's Swatch Group. Now, the 2022 Moon Swatch is a logical starting point, although quartz like the G-Shock, its analog display is more traditional and often easier to set than the labyrinthine Casio and its endless menu of multifunctions. At $270, we're still looking at a slightly higher price point than the Ed Sheeran, but again, still solidly affordable territory. Great watches always come with great stories, and when presenting this gift, you can regale the recipients of these colorful machines with tales of space travel, the full fat Omega moon watch that inspired it, Apollo, the space shuttle, and even the moon swatch's own rock star-like phenom status from the early days on the market. Yep, they were all lining up to get the moon swatch right there. Finally, there is a sub $500 mechanical watch option that any watch enthusiast would be thrilled to own, and that is the 2023 Blancpain Swatch Bioceramic Scuba 50 Fathoms. This, well, let's just backtrack. This is the 70th year of the famous 50 Fathoms line, and everyone expected the 70th anniversary of the legendary watch would bring new models. Everyone expected that, but nobody expected that the most sensational of these would be a $400 plastic swatch collaboration, but it proved to be the case. This is a real mechanical automatic winding dive watch with a 300 foot rating, 50 fathoms, in other words, big time loom, a 90 hour automatic winding power reserve, and a 120 click bezel with action so slick it puts the actual 50 fathoms to shame. That's right, the scuba has better bezel action than the 5015. Its 42.3 millimeter bioceramic case is frankly a type of hardened plastic, but that's fine for the price and pays dividends in impact resistance. Plus, these are lighter and smaller than the actual 5015 reference, so kids and women can enjoy them too. Each version of the watch, and there are several, features an historic or contemporary 50 fathoms dial with either date or time only, and each case back includes the image of a sea slug or nudibranch native to the ocean for which the respective model variant is named. Give this mechanical plastic blanc pat this holiday, and your watch collector friend or family will light up as though they were an actual lottery winner. It's a no miss. This will be the hit under the tree, regardless of what else is given. And if you celebrate Festivus, it will be that much more appreciated. Viewers chats number two. Colin H. shot this insane cockpit capture of his Hanhart Pioneer mono control in a UH-1 chopper over Wyoming. Robert R. flies civilian from Berlin to Vancouver with his Nomos Autobahn, possibly the coolest Nomos. Michael K. treks through the jungles of Nicaragua with his 1916 bought Parmigiani Tanda. Thank you for trusting our company and stay safe. Tack W forwards a his and hers anniversary night shot of JLC Reversos. John K reports from Hong Kong with his Walden International Chronometer Chronograph with Calendar. Very cool stuff. Send your wrist shots to Monday Mailbag at thewatchbox.com to see your pieces on these pixels. Holidays 2023 and how to shop for watch enthusiast up second thousands of dollars. Now we're talking serious money. There are two reasons for upping the ante to single digit thousands when shopping for a gift watch. First, you might be in a financial position that a sub $10,000 watch is not a heavy lift for you. And your feelings won't be hurt if, say, a $4,000 watch gets exchanged for another. Second, you might know the collector particularly well. That means you don't have to guess as much and the chance of a mistake is considerably lower. However, this is real money territory now. So offer the receipt for return if it turns out they have a dramatically different idea of what the perfect holiday watch in this price range might be. Remember, a committed watch enthusiast already knows roughly what any of these watches cost, so don't be shy about offering this receipt for an exchange. Now, don't include the 
proof of purchase in the box with the gift, but decide in advance whether to make it available after the fact if it could help ease someone into something that they would truly love for the holidays. Now, Oris owns this spot. Its Aqua State can be had in 41.5 or 43.5 millimeter case sizes. The warranty is 10 years, which is ideal because a gift should not be a burden. And likewise, the service interval is one full decade. As a 300 meter dive watch with a quick release bracelet, unidirectional ceramic capped bezel, extensible dive clasp, and plenty of loom, the functionality matches plenty of $10,000 plus watches from bigger brands. Finally, the Oris Exclusive Caliber 400 Automatic packs twin barrels and five days of power reserve, a silicon escapement, minus three plus five second per day accuracy, and resistance to magnetic fields of 2,250 gauss. And several dials are available, plus you can even get two-tone if you wish, but full bracelet in steel with a colorful dial. It's going to be $3,700. What a bargain. Cross the border. Nomos Glasuta is famous for making affordable mechanical watches suitable for graduation, holidays, and birthday gifts. The Metro Neomatic 39 is an automatic with a midnight blue dial that showcases the company's legendary facility with minimalist design, attention to detail, and value. A Nomos Metro is defined by its elegant wire-style lugs, and this example adds an intense midnight blue dial. Look at those tiered hands. What a masterpiece. Look how the bezel is exactly as broad as the triple knurled crown. This is what Nomos does so well. Nomos offers accessible entry into the distinct world of German luxury watchmaking for a fraction of Lange, Lang und Heine, or even Glasuta Original money. And the company is an integrated manufacturer and an accomplished one at that. The Metro 39 includes a no excuse in-house movement, the DUW 3001, and the company fabricates this all the way down to the balance, the blued hairspring, and the escapement. This is their swing system. Very few watchmakers or manufacturers of any size can make these parts themselves. At 4280 this is the most expensive of our mid-range watches, but then again, this is a substantial watch from a brand that has spent money and time on the product. Longines. One of the largest and most successful watch brands in the world, but we hardly discuss it on this program. Along with Omega and Tissot, Longines is one of the few things unarguably right about the Swatch Group and its management and product planning right now. Today, Longines gets its due on this program. The Spirit Zulu Time is a travel watch, a pilot's watch, a watch for international business people, and a fantastic gift at $3,150. At 39 millimeters, this is a fantastic size for men and many women. The dial looks more expensive than it is with gilt print, chaptering, applied gold numerals, and a black base. The bezel packs a gold inset GMT scale with a ceramic insert, plus a range of colors are offered, so you do have options right here. Mechanically, it's far more interesting than many $3,000 watches, thanks to its dual-time 12 24-hour display capability, independent time zones, 72-hour power reserve, chronometer certification, 100-meter water resistance, anti-magnetic silicon hairspring, and a bracelet with quick release that still permits conventional custom and normally sized 21 millimeter straps to be used. They put the quick release in the lugs of the bracelet, not in the lugs of the case. So you can use any standard size strap on there, which is very cool. Let's see what you guys are saying. Abdul R. Longines is great, definitely great value for money and very respected by everyone. JGC, I'd do cartwheels if there was an Ultracron under the tree. I like that idea too. Longines, please make this happen. What else is going on here? Mark S. saying, with the Nomos, beautiful movement. Abdul, Nomos 39 wears more like a 41. Abdul knows he is a Nomos collector, so take that in mind. Bicycle Chess Tour says, give a flick flack. When a swatch is too grand or you're dealing with a small child, flick flack might be the call. We have Thomas Burnett saying, a datograph would be an awesome addition to your collection. 
I agree. That is the ultimate gift watch if you know exactly what the person wants and you've got the budget to swing it. Another comment, that Aorus is one hell of a watch for the money. Bicycle Chess Tour saying we went from G-Shock watch to 1000 Where is the value range? Well, it starts at the bottom and it goes all the way to the top, and we're going to talk about that. Jim Millett, how has Tim not got over 1,000 live viewers? Because I haven't talked about how rich I am, how controversial I am, who I'm feuding with, or which $150 microbrand watch from China destroys Rolex. That's why, unfortunately, guys, it's just the nature of the business. But if you want to watch, subscribe, and upvote me, please. Airdam13 saying Casino Royale is a nice, affordable pick. We will take that into consideration. B&M saying put in the Tudor 1926. Okay, moving on, we have a watch that proves vast expense isn't mandatory in order to experience technical novelty and innovative technology. This is probably my favorite watch in the show tonight, so stay tuned. The 43.5 millimeter steel Bulova Accutron Space View 2020 isn't a tuning fork watch like its 1960s and 70s namesake, but the fascinating use of electrostatic generators and premium quartz technology makes the modern Space View equally interesting and intriguing. In this frame, taking a look at this picture, let's go back to the other one real quick. Right there. You can see the twin generator turbines at the bottom that generate energy for a capacitor storage device holding the energy. You can see the large electrostatic motor in the upper left hand corner. That drives the seconds hand in a perfectly smooth sweep. And then you have stepper motors for the hour hand and the minutes hand. This is super cool because like the FP Journe Elegant, the power intensive Accutron has a sleep mode after about five minutes. The motors deactivate to save energy while the microelectronics continue to track the time. When roused from its slumber by wrist motion, the Accutron awakens to display the current time. So this is a great way to get something that's as interesting as the Journe Elegant, more accurate than the Journe Elegant, has real history behind it with made in Japan quality and reliability and the superb fit of a watch that's all case and minimally lug. Who wouldn't be thrilled to get this watch? Plus, the rated accuracy is roughly three times better than standard quartz at plus or minus five seconds per day. The new Space View is also mechanically assembled by Miyota in Nagano Prefecture in Japan. So again, made in Japan, always a mark of quality. That's something I hold in equal esteem with made in Germany or made in Switzerland. And then this is all owned by Citizen Group, which has the money to thoroughly develop the technology and then back it with a true luxury five-year warranty. Remember, at this point, Patek Philippe is still two. The Omegas, the Rolexes of the world, they're going with five now. And sure enough, this is five, which I love to see. $3,650 on a strap. The Bulova Accutron Space View 2020 is not a cheap watch, but made in Japan technology quality and its implementation is truly fascinating and engrossing. Plus, the five year warranty definitely backs the anticipated reliability of this watch going forward. And it's a self energizing generator watch. It should need close to no attention. Okay, viewer wrist shots number three. Nathaniel K of Florida is a colorful character character, red strap, rose gold watch, JLC master grand memovox, perpetual calendar and alarm. Roy S tests his marksmanship, plinking with the Breitling Premier on a vintage style full mesh bracelet with straight lugs and his Henry. That was fast. <laughs> Marco D sports the latest Mad One Green. Presumably he missed out on the blue and the red. Those were the first call to get the green, according to Max. David P and his Bulova Lunar Pilot back the Bulldogs at the Harvard Yale football game. Dana A and his Rolex Date 840 Olive Dial celebrate a family birthday over dinner. I love those special occasions. Send your wrist shots to Monday Mailbag at thewatchbox.com to see your watch on my box. I will have to come up with a play on words for 1916, one that doesn't involve Motorhead, the Easter Rising in Ireland, or World War I. 
holidays 2023 and how to shop for watch enthusiasts up third elite money and high horology at this point the budget is essentially whatever you want it to be but nominally i'm going to say ten thousand dollars and up we're in the big leagues here and i know that giving car priced watches is a thing because i've seen it time and again in this industry recently i was at a lunch where an fp journe complication was given as a gift and that was just pre-thanksgiving now we're into christmas hanukkah and whatever other holiday you want to call, this is the season for giving the big gifts. So speaking of Jorn, I learned a lesson years ago when I attended the Jorn New York Boutique's 30th anniversary event for Francois Paul, who was actually present for the evening. But the most interesting people in the showroom that night were a pair of young collectors from Singapore, and one of them was attending to select a wedding gift from the bride's family. Yes, this was the gift that her family was going to give to him, and he was there to shop it so he could tell them exactly what he wanted. And he chose the Chronomet Bleu, a good choice in hindsight. Whether you're culturally aligned with this wedding practice or not, it's a brilliant idea to involve the recipient when giving a monstrously expensive watch as a gift let them choose it and then give it to them. This way, assuming you've agreed on budget and model, there can be no disappointment. You'll see their eyes light up, the look on their face, and you'll have the warm fuzzies of having given something that is dearly desired and earnestly appreciated. Uh, I would even say this, when shopping for a watch for a high-level collector, spending five figures or more, it's a brilliant idea, and it might just be best to ask the person to make a list of maybe three to five watches that he would be equally thrilled to receive. This way, you ensure the success of the gift. It's guaranteed to hit the spot, but the actual model remains a tantalizing mystery until the moment the package is open, so that element of surprise is preserved. And that's a big part of the fun of giving a gift. So it may be best to say, here's three to five watches that I want. Person, give me one. I like them all. Surprise me. Everyone comes out happy from that holiday experience, and that's probably the best way to do this. Alternatively, agree in advance on a budget and then go shopping together. Make the experience of shopping the watch and buying the watch, putting it on, sizing it, and carrying it home as much a part of the gift as the watch itself. You know, give a thoughtful card with a heartfelt message on the day of the holiday. Mention the shopping trip to follow and then do it. Follow up. Make a day of it. Buy the watch amid a nice trip lunch, a visit to the city, and sightseeing. Go see a movie afterwards. Make it dinner and a movie. Then the recipient will start his journey with that watch, already associating one great memory with the timepiece. And I've always said that the best watches are the ones that have great memories associated with them. A tiny yellow gold dress watch is probably not what most of us would choose, but I guarantee if you have a watch inherited from a grandpa or an aged father, it's probably a lot like that and it's the most valuable watch sentimentally that you own because of the memories so even when the watch is wrong the memories can make it right why choose get the right watch and the best memories start off on the right foot here are a few suggestions to inspire a loved one who can't decide Patek Philippe 5226G newly arrived 40 millimeters, white gold, sharp lugs, floating lugs, 40 millimeter knurled case, textured charcoal gradient fade dial with crazy loom, syringe hands, chapter ring, possibly the coolest current Patek you can buy without approval or a waiting list, $40,220, but I consider that to be a safe store value. JLC Duomet UTT from late in 2015 with a hammered dial by hand, twin time zones settable to the minute, not just the hour, but the minute. A jump hour action for the second time zone, JLC's first jump hour wristwatch, and the still staggering dual wing movement. This is the ultimate high horology travel watch. $51,000 new, maybe ten dollars to $12,000 less if you can find one. 42 millimeters, they made 200, happy hunting. 
Breguet, 7027. We talked about Breguet last week. This is one of the best ways to buy Breguet used. At 37 millimeters and timeless in its style, in fact, drawing on the imagery of Breguet pocket watches, this is a standout in any era. For him, for her, even a young person with a smaller wrist, the size is right. Currently the best value in high horology dress watches. Retail is 28 grand, but you can get these for 16, 17, even 14 and 15 all day long used. Audemars Piguet, code 1159 star wheel. My favorite Audemars Piguet of the year, one of my nominees for top three watches of the year. Forget the ultra complication. Le Universel, you do not have any part of my heart or my affections. This is the coolest Audemars Piguet watch in like a decade. With satellite digital time, the glorious star wheel complication, an adventuring dial, and the hugely underrated Code 1159 case, this $57,900 AP for once actually seems worth the price they're asking. Viewer wrist shots number four. I asked, you answered, but before we jump in, let's see what you guys are saying in the box. Because there's always a lot of you and you are a committed crew. Mark S saying, I missed the JLC obsessed Tim. I'm still the JLC affectionate Tim, but I'm beholden to no brand. Thomas Burnett saying, Duomet is awesome. We got the awesome, waiting for the Patek LeBron James watch. We have a question. What about Longine Master Small Second Salmon? If you like it, it definitely fits. What else is going on? O'Neill M saying, Mark S. Tim's branched off. I do hate when he mentions under the radar watches that we want to buy, though. I'll do my best. I'm not Hodinkee. I'm not Watchanish. I'm sure I'm not poisoning the well. And what else is going on in the box? A lot of comments, a lot of questions. You guys never disappoint. You are an insightful and enthusiastic and ever-present group. I appreciate my live viewers. You are the hardcore, the true believers. Viewer is chats number four. JWD prepares for Thanksgiving in New York with his Omega Speedmaster Apollo 17. Derek W. captures the most famous green crystal in all of watchmaking with his Milgauss GV. Giovanni highlights the range of his collection with the Grand Reverso Enamel Limited Edition and Panerai PAM422. James L. of Toronto celebrates Parmigiani Fleurier with his rare and versatile Tonda PF. Tony S. Captures a classical wrist pose with his ball train master cannonball chrono. And Brian M. takes us home with his Cartier Tonneau CPCP, that is Cartier Collection Paris. Absolutely fantastic. Everyone who watched, I am in your debt. Sean, who was limber on the switcher for a tough show, chapeau as always, my man. Guys, let me know in the description below what comments you want to see and topics you want to see as we wind down 2023 and the last few episodes of Watches Tonight. Also, let me know, what are your holiday gift ideas? What watch would you give? What watch would you like to be given? Let me know in the description below. Time out, Tim out, and thanks for logging on.